Hello. Hi. Kayla Lord. John Brownstone. Of Loving BDSM, where we help kinksters like you have happy, healthy power exchange relationships. Okay, so this week's question is uh-huh. simple, straight to the point, but a very important question mm. that I think more people should be asking themselves. Uh, the question says, my husband is a dominant and I am a submissive. He has all these needs that I want to fulfill, but I know as a submissive, I have needs too. How do I make sure those are taken care of? That's a question I want every submissive going forward to ask themselves. If you've never asked yourself, well, how am I going to make sure I get what I need? That is your assignment. That is your homework. Go (laughs) ask yourself that question. I think power exchange relationships would be a lot better off if both sides of the slash were like, yeah, yeah, but but how am I going to get mine too? Right. So what are your thoughts? Well, it's a little bit of a generic question is a good question but a generic yes question i agree so i i think what they need to do first is as a submissive need to know what their needs are right as as you know them at this point because right. needs can and will change over time correct that that's the first step mm-hmm. um next step um, i'm going to use a word that gets floated around quite a bit on you know our favorite word yeah communicate no dominant is a mind reader and he cannot or they cannot fulfill your needs unless they know what they are right absolutely so you you need to make those needs known and you know that need that should be part of the negotiation from the very beginning right here's what i would like to get out of this here's what i'm looking for here's what i would like to experience here's what i'd Mm -hmm. like to feel here's what i do not want to experience or feel or go through or deal with all of that yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. absolutely so that's the big step towards that right and so i have other thoughts that go beyond that but let's start there so in the communication part um Sometimes it's easier said than done. I'm very well aware of that on a personal Mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. The thing we often talk about is speaking to a partner, but that is not always easy, especially when you're in a new relationship or you are Mm -hmm. new to communicating in a healthy way. Maybe previous relationships or just previous life experiences, you did not feel like you could say what you needed to say. It didn't feel safe to share your thoughts and opinions or for a number of reasons you just clam up and you get all anxious or you feel away every time you have to express yourself so the thing about communication is finding what will allow you to express yourself in the most effective but comfortable way so if looking your partner in the eyes and saying these are the things i need is you're not there yet you still need to communicate your needs so how are you going to do that Um, my preference early on in our relationship is writing it down i have Mm -hmm. always felt more comfortable expressing my thoughts through the written word than saying them out loud i understand the irony right now as i speak into this microphone okay (laughs) (laughs) but there was a time it felt too raw too scary i was i made myself too vulnerable too vulnerable yeah when i had to just say here's the thing i'd like for you to do to me john Mm -hmm. brownstone and here is why i want that thing um or here is what i want to feel or here is what i need i that was hard so i would write it down and either email it to him that's early days Mm -hmm. when we're long distance relationship just send that email and then i had said what I needed to say and been able to edit myself and read it over 50 million times to make sure it's like, this is really what I mean. And then he could read it on his own time. Now the downside to that kind of communication is for me, at least I was on pins and needles waiting. I was like, well, (laughs) surely by now he's read it. Okay. Why haven't I gotten a response? Uh Uh-oh. I think he might be reading it right now. I know what his schedule is. He's got time right now. Uh Uh-oh. When am I going to get a response? So I did add a level of anxiety to that, Mm -hmm. but it worked. It allowed me to get my thoughts out. Once we lived together, there were a few times you would wake up in the morning, go to your desk and there'd find a piece of paper, tri folded piece of paper with, uh, my front back, sometimes multiple pieces, uh, that method of communication worked really well when we were in conflict. That way yes. I could say what I needed to say and not have to like maintain eye contact. Um, <laughs> I know people who do voice messages and, um, and you know, send voice mm-hmm. recordings. Um, whatever works for you to share your thoughts in a way that feels less scary than looking your person in the eye and going, hey, here's what I need. The thing is, is 
the longer you learn that you can communicate your needs and that person is a safe person who will honor those needs, who will communicate effectively with you, who is not going to belittle you, like whatever your fears are, whatever it is that holds you back from saying the thing to their face, eventually you can get to that point. Eventually, maybe you don't need to, to write a letter. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't need to send a text. Maybe you can sit down and have that conversation. So that's a big part of it. Yeah, we say communicate, but what does that mean? Whatever way effectively get your point across. True. So do not be afraid to use alternative methods if having the conversation just, it, it feels like it's too much. The other thing that comes to mind mm -hmm. is this question gets asked a lot and we have an upcoming question, spoiler alert, that will land on this side of things where, okay, I've expressed my needs, but they're still not being fulfilled. What do I do now? Mm. And that to me is about holding each other accountable. And, yeah. you know, we taught, we've done an episode on accountability links in the places. And from a dominant perspective, accountability is kind of easy. Oh, there's a consequence. Oh, you know, yeah. I, you know, I'm going to give you the look, I'm going to give you a stern voice, like whatever it is that resonates with the submissive. And then they're like, oh, maybe I'll change my behavior. You don't really have that as a submissive, but what you do have is the, well, uh, I don't have to be your submissive. If you can't do That's what true. you say you're going to do, mm -hmm. and, or if you've made this one sided and only your needs get to be fulfilled, then what are we doing here? Because right. as a submissive, I you know, have every right to get whatever it is I need. And I know many submissives who will say, well, I only want what my dominant wants. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to assume you're very new. You're very new. And uh, maybe you just don't know what you want yet. <laughs> you have you have needs, even if you can't articulate them yet, even if you haven't come across them and seen the example and gone, oh yeah, that, I want that, you, you do. You have your own individual needs, I promise. Even if it's as simple as I want to feel seen, I want to feel heard, I want to have my thoughts validated, I want, you know, you have a mm -hmm. need. If you can't articulate it yet, that stop where we're at, back up, go back to that part. That's step one, figure out what you need so that you have something to tell a partner. Uh, but if you are doing all of that and then they're not giving you what you need, they're not being an active mm -hmm. participant, this is, power exchange is a give and take. Yeah. Um, then that's a problem. And sometimes how you hold your partner accountable is that we're not doing this anymore. Now you still have to have effective communication for that. You, Absolutely. You know, I'm not a fan of, well, I'm just gonna stop doing everything I said as I would do as a submissive because you're not like, we're not gonna just stop everything and not have a conversation. Yeah. What we're gonna do is have a conversation and I may say, well, if you can't participate and if I am feeling mm -hmm. unfulfilled, then I won't do this anymore. I won't Correct. do what I said I would do. Um, yes, absolutely. But <laughs> you know, in a, especially in a long-term relationship, we live together. We're looking at one another. Right. If tomorrow I never had a conversation with you, but I was feeling unfulfilled and I just stopped doing everything, I've just blown everything up. I've created an mm -hmm. argument when maybe a conversation would it, have that at that point it, it creates more of a problem than right yeah. exactly exactly yeah. um so that is something absolutely to consider mm -hmm. um but when it you know it's a constant conversation even in our relationship there are times where i'm feeling really fulfilled i'm getting everything i need i'm i'm feeling good we're we're rolling along and then life will get in the way and you get in your head or mm -hmm. there's a lot of stress going on. Or for me as a service submissive, I'm doing more of the servicing than I'm doing anything else. So the other parts of me aren't, you know, getting any attention. It is on me to say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't, I can't pour from an empty well here. I can, exactly. can I get some of what I need? Sometimes for me, that comes out a little whiny. I mean, I am a baby girl. We are, you know, caregiver little, it, it happens. Or even a little sassy. Uh, I mean, I don't consider myself a brat. I've, we've had this conversation in previous episodes. <laughs> it, it drove me to tears feeling misunderstood because I do not want that label for myself. <laughs> 
That being said, I understand I walk a line because there have been a couple times you're like, well, you're being like extra sassy. And I'm like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Can you imagine why that might be right now? Now, is, <laughs> is that effective communication? Maybe. Mm. Did you know what I meant when I said what I said? <laughs> then I have uh, communicated effectively at that point. Uh, but it all comes down to that. It all comes back to wait, there's a problem here. Mm. Whether that problem is, I understand that life is happening and my dominant just doesn't have the energy, or I understand that life is happening and I have taken on more than I used to, but whatever is going on, I'm not getting what I need as a submissive. Um, you have to have that conversation. I don't care how long you've been together. I don't care how much you love one another. I don't care how good it is when it's good. Hey, when it's good for me and JB, it's um, fucking amazing, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a That's reason true. we'll walk through hellfire for one another, okay? <laughs> but that doesn't mean that when things get rough, you know, the first thing to go for us is a kink scene. The second thing to go is any deeper, more meaningful power exchange beyond what is part of our routine. Um, I tend to be the watcher and the one who's like on pins and needles, like how do we, you know, I don't want this boat to rock too damn much. Mm -hmm. uh, blame, blame my anxiety, it's fine. Um, and so I'm usually the first one to say something. But I am also that submissive who will give and give and give. Oh, JB needs this kind of scene, even though it's not my favorite kind of scene because it'll relieve tension. Oh, JB needs me for this because he's going through it. And I will give mm -hmm. until I'm not sassy. I'm a fucking bitch. I am, <laughs> I am done. There's like, what respectful tone? I don't know her, okay? Um, Hence the nickname Scorpio bitch from hell. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. And it just always comes back to, I've got to say something. I've got to say, yes, I understand why some of this has been put on the back burner. However, yeah. I need some of this. When we do too many scenes in a row that focus on JB's preferred sensations, I'll like run a flag up and go, mm -hmm. hey, 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 can I, can I somewhere in here, still under the purview of all of your control, it's still your decision to make, but I am telling you, I need thud. I need the massage like experience. I need the thing that lets me zen out. That is what I need. I'm glad we're having these moments. Yes, I consent to these things, but mm -hmm. here are my needs. In reality, after 10 years of being together, that has become a lot easier to do. In the early days of our relationship, I was still new to learning how to communicate effectively and to trust that my voice would be heard. Um, and that was harder. It does get easier, but it's a thing you gotta practice. And so start with writing it down, saying it where they can't see you and you don't have to look at them, keeping a journal that they get to read. I know that's a really common one mm -hmm. with some power exchange um, couples, um, but let them know what those needs are. Absolutely. Because like Absolutely. you said, they're not a mind reader. No. Your, your dominant is not a mind reader. And if you have one of those dominant partners who goes, well, your needs don't matter. Your needs are my needs. And as long as I'm getting what I want, that's all that matters. No, no, throw that one out. Okay, let's try again. We'll catch another fish later toss that one back. That one's no good. That one's not doing, no. Mm -hmm. they, that is the person who thinks that being a dominant means being uh, an asshole who only gets what they need. Um, and no, that's that's not how any of this works. Mm -hmm. uh, it is absolutely a give and take. That's true. Mm -hmm. Any uh, closing thoughts from you? No, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, just um, like I said earlier, communicate. You know, let it be part of the negotiation, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 work from there and understand what it is you want. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Sometimes, you know, for newer submissives especially, they're like, mm -hmm. I want what you want. No, no, no. That's fun and there there's a time and a place for that. And yeah, yeah I often want whatever JB wants, I'm happy with. <laughs> let me turn my brain off, this is great. Um, but I also have needs and right. it is my job to figure that out I've figured out a lot of them with JB's help. That's been part of the fun of this and, and part of the mm -hmm. path and journey. Um, but it is still my responsibility to go, hey, hi, this is what I need, this is what I want. And if yeah. you know your partner won't listen or makes empty promises and does not fulfill them, then 
you have to hold them accountable. And right. that often looks like, okay, I guess we can't do this anymore. And that sucks and that hurts, but that is better than staying in an unfulfilling relationship where you grow resentful over time. True, true. Mm -hmm. So hmm. that is it for this week. Thank you for mm -hmm. that question. If you would like us to answer one of your questions, um, link is in the places. Ask away. We, uh, we are compiling these and we'll keep doing them as long as folks have questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have any thoughts, you would add things that you have learned over time about getting your needs, especially as a submissive fulfilled, uh, comment below, share with the class. We can all learn from one another. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this, we love a thumbs up. If you like it enough to want to come back for more, please consider subscribing. And ring the notification bell to get updates and new content. Just do it, Daddy says.